Welcome to Allie's Attic, where you never know what kind of surprise you'll find in my attic. I'm your host, Allie, and today my surprise is an American music singer-songwriter from Anchorage, Alaska now, Chris Watkins. Hi, Chris. Hello, Allie. How are you? Oh, thanks for coming on. How's it going? Just fine. Now, um, you're in Anchorage, Alaska, which I just have one question. Does it get dark, like, does it go dark for long periods of time, or am I in the wrong continent? <laughs> well, no, yeah, it's, um, I don't, I've never been to Canada myself, but um, it's more or less in the same, uh, same ballpark. Yeah. You've got, uh, you know, roughly uh, fall until at the beginning of spring, and it's pretty dark. Oh. Wow, that would be crazy with people with seasonal depression. Anyway, I just wanted to ask that because I meant to and I forgot. Now, um, I found you on Twitter, and I absolutely love your songs. So does my mom. My mom absolutely loves the name Drunk Poets um, because it is called Chris Watkins, Drunk Poets. Um, Now, when did you start in music, and how did you get to where you are today? Well, I started when I was pretty young, because I was 16. Are you there? Yep. Okay. And, um, <clears throat> how did I get where I am today? Well, I just I just could not stop writing. That's really all there is to it. Um, it got to a point where, you know, it, it seemed like it would probably be a more realistic thing to uh, kind of stop. But I, I couldn't, my, my mind would not let me stop, so... Wow. Uh, at this point, I'm uh, just going to keep going. So you play the guitar as well? Yeah. Okay. Now, it's an alternative band, right? The Drunk Poets? Yeah, I suppose it falls under those, uh, that category. Yes. Okay. Uh, I don't have a problem with that at all. <laughs> and now, um, it's saying in the 1990s, it greatly influenced the Alaskan music scene. Um, what is the music scene like there? Uh, it's, it's, it's pretty small. It's, uh, and still, that's for sure, because, you know, the geographic limitations. Mm-hmm. So, uh, it, that's really all I can say. Oh. There. Yeah. I, I don't have a lot of connections to other musicians here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, do you... So, how do you market yourself? Like, do you go all over and play, or just YouTube and Twitter, and how do you how do you market yourself? Uh, at the moment, social media is, is very, very important to me. Mm-hmm. Without it, I, I certainly wouldn't be doing this show right now. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, you know, I have that thing for it. Well, we don't do a lot of performing live. Um, I would like to do so, but I would <clears throat> I would like to do it in front of a receptive audience. I've spent a lot of time playing to people that were so drunk that they didn't even know they were listening to. It's good for practice, but it's not something that I look forward to. People are going to listen. Yeah. Well, it's your passion, right? We talked about this earlier in another interview about the passion of music and um, how important singer songwriters are, especially nowadays with the world in so much turmoil, um, because music is very powerful. And I don't know if a lot of people realize that. And it is disheartening when you get up on stage and play, like you said, in front of a whole bunch of people who've been drinking who couldn't even care less what you're what you're saying or singing or anything um not that i don't because i don't sing but i could just imagine that would suck really bad um so how many albums do you have out chris oh there's right now we have what uh, there's seven up right now there are seven up on itunes spotify oh wow there, we have, there are some more laying around from 20 30 odd years ago but i I'd have to get them digitally mastered. Oh, okay. I'm waiting for that. Okay. Um, so, your most recent album, though, is Lights All Askew? That's right. And you talk about <laughs> this... I want you to listen to the interview I had this afternoon, because your bio is so much like 
the guy I talked to, um, talking about influences. Now, your influences have been Lou Reed, who I love, Talking Heads, Bob Dylan. And uh, we talked about those in that interview and about how they told a story and uh, they touched us in different ways. And they're still around. And I mean, Bob Dylan is iconic. Um, what is it about them that influences you? Is it just their sound or the way they write? Um, well, I, most of the people that have influenced me were influenced by other forms besides just music. Um, I think if you just get locked into a, a one, if you're just, if you're just being influenced by the music scene, and and not by a film or uh, you know literature or you know drama or, or any of those activities. I think I think the work is going to suffer. It's, you've got to find new ways to express yourself within the format that you're working in. And the only way to do that is to sort of educate yourself in other areas. Mm -hmm. So the people that I look up to and still admire. Uh, the, all the people that you just mentioned, that whole list, are of that mind. I mean, they are, you know, intelligent people who are influenced by other forms besides the one that they are looking at. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. It totally makes sense. Um, and I agree with you. Not, I mean, I'm I'm an announcer. I was a radio announcer for 18 years. But I find reading and learning about different people doing this show, I get so wrapped up in the stories um, because I'm learning something new and it only enriches me and my life and how I can come across and what I can offer people. And, uh, so I ask, I know, totally know what you mean. And Bob Dylan is just the perfect person to talk about when you talk about people that, you know, have other outlets. Um, and I think that really plays into how you sound and what you write. You're like, I mean, you're correct. It, it totally does. Now, if, Boy, so you're, I'm still wrapped around Alaska. If you had a dream, other than like, I mean, with this, with your band, where would you like to perform or where would you like to go from here? Well, I'm looking at um, audience wise, I think um, right now um, the Europeans are, are, are more um, hip to what I'm doing and that. Uh, the average, uh, you know, <clears throat> college kid in the United States. Not that they're not capable of it, but I, I don't think they've reached that point yet. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that will happen. Not me, but, you know, other artists of, of like mine, like myself, that are out there struggling with social media at the moment. Mm -hmm. But just, just personally, it, it just seems like most of my audience uh, is, is over in Europe at the moment. Yeah, I have a lot uh, of... You know, that could change it change any time and yeah um, so you'd like to get probably a bigger following in the states and start playing more there or well, I'm you know I'm up for playing anywhere as long as someone's going to listen yeah um, <laughs> I, I'm not quite sure how big my audience is in the US I, I know it's there but it, it doesn't be as um, outspoken as the international audience at present mm-hmm yeah, I have a lot of UK followers. It surprised me when I started the show. I thought I'd have a lot more Canadian. Yeah. And yeah, actually, it goes yeah. in, in order. It goes the US, because I have a lot of artists from the US. And then it goes uh, Canada, and then the UK. <laughs> and you're right. They're a lot yeah. more outspoken, and they're not afraid to tell you if they like your stuff. And that is awesome. And I have a lot of artists that come on that are from the UK. So, um, yeah. so you've never been to Canada at all. <laughs> No, I have not. No, I have not. You have to come. Some parts are very beautiful. I would like <laughs> Winnipeg's, like yeah, Winnipeg summers are amazing. So I'm going to urge everybody that uh, knows of you and hears your songs after this, if they haven't heard of you already, to uh, get you out on the road, because I would love to watch you in concert. I think it would be amazing, and I'd love to hear your s other songs. Um, we have casinos out here. I'm sure, I don't know if Alaska has them, but where we have 
you know, artists that come out and play. And then we have smaller venues too, where artists come and play. So I'm urging everybody in Winnipeg, in Canada, anywhere, um, get Chris in your city to play because he is amazing, as you will hear when you hear the songs. Um, and you're very humble, Chris. Well, um, thank you, I guess. I, uh, I'm, I'm under no illusions that writing a good song is, is hard to do. So um, I guess that's probably where um, that comes in. It's, it's difficult to do each time, and um, it's always a humbling experience when you put pen to paper. You know? mm -hmm. So that, that's probably, you know, it's... it's <clears throat> I, I don't imagine it's hard for other artists if they're honest about it. Oh, yeah. I don't think it has anything to do with me. I think it's just uh, the work itself. Mm hmm. Um, now, I actually had a songwriter come on because it boggles my mind how people can write songs and you'll be listening to a song and it pertains to something that happened in your personal life. And it just, it blows me away that people can actually do that. And I mean, you have to realize that people do go through the same things as you do, it, not exactly the same, but the same scenario kind of. And the real singer songwriters capture that and you capture that in your songs and kudos to you because um, I think it's very important to have a message in your, <clears throat> excuse me, in your music um, so that people can relate to it, not just something that you hear on the radio that you can go dance to and nothing against people that, you know, make that type of music either. I just really am into the singer-songwriters and the indie artists. I absolutely love them. And um, are you ever, like, do you ever want to get signed? Oh, I, well, yeah. I mean, it, more access people, uh, people have to work, then the uh, better off I am. Yeah, exactly. So, yes, of course. I, I you know, um, yes, yes. <laughs> I've talked to so many that don't want to be signed and have been told by bigger artists not to get signed. Um, and I think it's a two-sided coin because you have the freedom, if you're independent, right, to do whatever you want. But you don't maybe get the exposure or have somebody managing you and, you know, getting you out there as much as you possibly can if you're not signed or if you don't have a management team in place. So I think... It's two-sided. Like you were talking about social media. Social media is pushing so many more artists out in the spotlight. It is unbelievable. Um, Chance the Rapper, I mean, he, he won a Grammy just <laughs> just from pushing his SoundCloud and Spotify. And I mean, that it just it's amazing nowadays. And I mean, it's a lot different than when I grew up. So I'm glad that I found you on Twitter. I'm glad that you agreed to come on my show. Um, you've been so understanding with me going through surgery and everything, and I can't Thank you enough for that. Um, I totally appreciate it. And um, no problem. I hope that, you know, my door is always open, Chris. Like, if something huge happens, if you get signed, if you get to come to Winnipeg, <laughs> anything, um, just connect with okay. me on Twitter and I'll have you back on my show in a second because my goal in this whole weird thing that I'm doing is to provide a platform for people that might not get exposure or might not get heard. Not that I'm, you know, Howard Stern or anything, but I'm getting there. So no, that's that's yeah, that's what we need right now. We need to keep doing that um, mm -hmm. in a very big way because uh, if people like you are there, um, provide that space and a platform for um, people like myself to be heard, then what would be the point? Yeah, exactly. So, very, I'm very grateful. Oh, <laughs> thank you. I'm grateful that you came on. Just keep going is great advice and stick to your own kind of style is also really good advice. So um, I urge everybody to, to heed that because I know a lot of people are talking about we're on the cusp of music kind of changing where it's more a singer songwriter. And I think that's why you have to evolve and you have to kind of evolve, but keep yourself in your own headspace as well if I'm making any sense at all. But, um, yeah, that is great advice. Now, what two songs are we going to hear from you? Um, in the Dark and Cheerleader in Love. Okay. 
and uh, those will be up on my website. And you can purchase your music anywhere. You're all over. You're on Spotify. You're on SoundCloud. You're everywhere. iTunes. So I urge everybody to go out and buy these mu- these songs. His albums, they're just, they're amazing. I absolutely fell in love with you when I listened to them, um, which is why I asked you to come on my show. <laughs> and um, I hope everybody, like I said, supports you and gets you out there because I really think you're very, very talented and you deserve to be out there and performing to people that really want to hear your songs and getting your fans in front of you instead of just social media. So I urge everybody to do that. Um, I thank you very much for coming on my show, even though you can tell that you don't like talking. <laughs> you did really oh, no, well. No, 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 no. It's, it, it, it's my pleasure. I'm, I'm more than glad to be here. Yeah. The invitation. You're welcome. And anytime, anytime. Like I said, anything happens, it's big. You come up with a new album. Just, you know, hit me up on Twitter, let me know, and uh, we'll get you back on. Anytime. And right. I'm going to ask you a favor. I'm trying to find a way to liven things up on Ellie's Attic. And I was thinking of doing Friday nights, having a Skype concert, kind of, <laughs> where I pick an artist that's either been on or that I like and agrees, obviously, to come on Skype audio only, because I don't like anybody seeing me. So I know how you don't like talking about yourself. Um, do you think that's a good idea? Do you think people will go for that? Yeah, I think it sounds like a great idea. Okay. I'd be up for doing it anytime, yeah. Okay. Like, no, I, I think the idea itself is sound, so I would go for it. Okay, yeah, because then people... Which you can do. Yeah, they can just see it. They can tune right into it. It's not like having to go through the conversation and then listening to the songs or whatever. And I just think, yeah, I think it was a... I thought it was a great idea, so I'm just asking all the artists that I'm talking yeah. to. And definitely you'll be on if it gets off the ground and goes... Um, you'll be one of the artists I asked to come on just so everybody can hear you. Um, and okay, that's it. So thank you so much, Chris. I totally appreciate it. I like one it, Ali. It was, it was nice to meet you. And thanks for joining me on Ali's Attic. Keep checking my website because you never know what kind of surprises you'll find in my attic. Cheers. <laughs>